Hey guys, it's Mike the Wrestling God Smith. And you guys are watching All in Wrestling. So, sorry I haven't made a Raw video in a while. Because, like I said, I've been kind of keeping up with Raw and NXT. And I gotta say, just because I just saw the Raw review for Steven Larson, I'm gonna... I usually haven't, I haven't, done, a rant, I haven't done a Raw rant video in a while. But you know what? Today is special. And the reason why I'm saying it's special because... I don't know what's up with Raw. And you guys may think, Mike, what, what, what do you mean? Because, you know, I don't mind Eva Marie coming back for whatever reason. And I don't get it. Why is she here? Why is Piper Niven even here? And she's... Her gimmick does not fit. It doesn't fit her. I like her in NXT because she's really cool. But you know what? You know what they did? They took her, made her into a joke. And you know what's going to end up with that women's division? It's already stacked. What is she doing in that Raw? You're going to give him the SmackDown? But I digress. I digress. I, I can't, I can't do it, guys. I cannot do it. Like I really cannot do it. Because of the fact of the matter is, I, I just, like I'm trying to wrap my head around this process. Like it's going down to, like it's going down to the ground. Like they don't know what they're doing. They got a million women that are not even getting a title shot. You got Rhea in there that you just signed at WrestleMania. You just got out of Raw. So you're going to get Piper in there too? What is she doing there? What the heck is going on? Like, like there is no brain power between NXT and NXT UK. And they don't even tell Raw who she is. And that's really kind of crazy. And we got UK people. We got freaking Rhea Ripley. But everybody knows who Rhea Ripley is. But everybody else from UK, Nina Samuels, um, Kylie Ray, they will not do. And I would have thought maybe when they got Piper Niven or they called her up, and I kind of had a gut feeling that was the NXT Soul thing, the pitch that they were trying to do. But you know what? It's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine because of the situation they messed up. They do it all the bloody time. They mess up, they destroy something, they try to come up with some nutball thing. What ends up happening? Oh, because you know what, guys? I'm not even mad about Raw last night. I'm not even mad with all the stuff that happened. I'm not even mad with the Bobby Lashley Drew thing that they're still trying to push down our throats. Because Drew's not going to win that title of Hell in a Cell. We already know that. They won't even give Kofi a fair rematch, and they don't even get a fair rematch against Brock, the guy that he lost it from. But Miz got to be champion again. Morrison's never going to be champion. Damian Priest is never going to get a cha real championship because there's nothing really on Raw for him to get. And then magically, everybody else from who got fired from Raw are going to NXT. So, to the magical of the w, you know, WWE creative and WWE, because we're getting run by a guy who doesn't know what the heck they want to do. So magically, you got Adam Pearce there and you got Sonya Deville that are bunt they're both Nimrods because they don't know what they want to do with the product. Because you know why? These lackluster matches that we're supposed to be getting, like Humberto Carrillo versus Ricochet is a good match. Even with Sheamus, it's good. It's a rivalry there. But they're not going to do nothing with Drew Gulak. Nada. Didn't do nothing with Tazawa. There was a high flyer. They used him on the Cruiserweight circuit. Used him in 205. What did he end up doing? Oh. That dude's not even a threat. Let's make him a funny guy. Let's make him a comedy act and put the 20-0-7 title on a troop. That's the only title he's actually won. And it's sad. Everybody who's multi-decorated champions like Shelton Benjamin don't even get anything because they literally are on Raw. And such a Cedric Allen, the guy who th that has a bright future is going to end up being misused. And you know what's even more sad about the situation? I don't mind the extra crap. And I'm being, and I'm being and I apologize, guys, but I'm being honest here. We're, what are we going to get something seriously from Raw? What are we going to get something better? And you know what's even more sad? The guy who set up all this. I don't want everything to be PG, which is perfectly, relatively fine. NXT can make anybody a star and let them have that belt and they'll go nuts for it. But they'll make Karrion they'll make Karen Cross a star, even if they deserve it. They got rid of Braun Strowman. What did they get rid of him for? Budget cut. The guy could have been something if they knew how to book that dude. He was a big guy. They got the Giants curse. 
We haven't seen none of the people that are in Retribution. We haven't seen Mia Yim. We haven't seen Keith Lee. We haven't seen none of them. And the sad part is, even if he does come back, there's nothing, there's nothing going to be there. There's nothing there. So magically, they can get all these new, these new freaking color commenters and all this other junk, but you got rid of Samoa Joe. And Triple H was the only guy to fight to get him back. So they're so focused on NXT being the next generation of superstars. What the heck are you doing? I mean, really, do you have to have a pub? What's next? You want to shoot us in the back of our heads? Then Triple H is mad because the fans don't like this shit. The fans don't like it because we get booed. We get crap every time. You got rid of Brock Lesnar, you give Roman the Universal title, which is great on SmackDown because that's giving them freaking ratings. But what ends up happening? The guy that I should be getting happy for is Drew and maybe Kofi because I like Kofi because he's a good guy. But you know what? They're never going to give Xavier Wood the title. They're never going to give him nothing. They had the perfect formula with the Herpins. What did they do? They crapped on them too. And I'm going to give you an example of Raw tonight. Last night, we got another contract signing. Another one. For the women's title. For basically the women's title. The SmackDown women's title. Was there already done and ready to go? So basically, after Edge left and did what he did, Raw's pretty much a crap show. And magically... You got the guys who were part of the Herb, but you're not even giving them. You, you give Jeff Hardy something to do, but you won't give him a title. You make him do something. You got rid of Matt. He goes to AEW, becomes the biggest star in AEW, gets to run his way, gets to do whatever he wants because Tony Khan's not Vince. But you know what? I get it. I get the reason... I get the reason why we get the people we get in this situation, even in this business. And I get it because I'm a student of the wrestling business because I do a lot of research, guys. And thank you guys for all the views. And I appreciate your support. I am going to make T-shirts. I'm just trying to get a bit. I just want to get a bigger my own house so I can get so I can make so I can start selling things. Because like I said, I don't want this to keep happening and i've said this year after year because raw is the one place i cannot the reason why i will not watch it i can't stand it i can't stand the silliness i cannot i don't mind Miz and morrison but those guys are annoying those guys are worse and the sad part about everything that's going on which really makes me angry which really makes me steamed up and mad because the fact is we get, year after year, we get dumped on. Basically, you got a guy like Cedric Allison who's a young guy, who's a hungry dude. They're not going to give that dude nothing. They're not going to give Ricochet anything. They're not going to give freaking um, Mustafa, give him the retribution. They go, what did he do? He crapped on that too. We haven't seen the guy. But Matt Riddle and, and Randy Orton gets to get something though. They give him something to do. And magically, to all this situation, like I said, magically, everybody else who isn't a champion, who aren't, really came from NXT, then are going back. So Ember Moon, who went to Raw, didn't really get a chance to become champion at Raw, went back to NXT, went on SmackDown, didn't do nothing on SmackDown, what'd they do? Bring her back to NXT. She went a different level than she was. And the funny thing is, NXT welcomes everybody back. And magically, because I already know what's going to happen in NXT, and I'm, I'm going to just mild as well for you guys. Samoa Joe is coming back. Like I said, he's coming back. So that's already setting them up even better than they were. So magically, the guy's going to rip through some heads like he should have did when he was on NXT. The same thing he should have did when he was on Raw facing Seth when he was there. But magically, like I have to accept everything. Because magically, I really want to say to WWE, what the heck are you doing? You're literally killing the product, man. You're killing it. You're killing the bloody product for nothing because you want to get Piper Nivis up there with Eva Marie. Eva Marie doesn't do anything. That's why she left. They couldn't do anything with her. She wasn't even a good asset when they got her on SmackDown because she wasn't good. She's not Naomi. She's not Lana. She's not these women that actually want to try to make something or Nia Jax who made something of herself. 
and magically, because they want to bring her back, and because she wants to make her come back, nobody really cares. She was 2060. She hasn't been back since then. That was five years ago. And it's really crazy that everybody who was on Raw, who went to Raw, liked Severo, the guy they brought in to make him, he was going to be the next triple. And what did he do? He did it. Because I'm not trying to be so loud, but like what I mean is, guys, they give us all these new guys to come into Raw to give us a hope that maybe they'll be champion. Drew came back and became champion, but they won't even give the guy anything. So magically, they want to put it on Bobby because Bobby's been longer here than here than Joe. I mean, than Drew was. And the funny thing with Bobby, he could have got it 13 years ago. They didn't want to push him because WWE's the ECW pro pro brand didn't work. Because it wasn't their thing. It couldn't be made anything because they were trying to dumb everything down for everybody. So the cult class in which was ECW Wrestling doesn't exist. Why do you think like Christian came back? He only came back because they were trying to push him on WCW. I mean ECW. And what did he do? He went right back to Raw. Became a, He didn't even become a champion. A Royal League title to last SummerSlam like 11 years ago. So pretty much... The fact of the matter is, the people, they're they're letting go or they leave because Raw, they see what Raw is becoming. What I'm being, guys, it's not just a coincidence that everybody goes into AEW. It's not a coincidence. It wasn't a coincidence that Kyrie went back to Japan because she wasn't getting anything. She wasn't. Asuka was going to be able, she still was going to make a star out of her, and they only gave her a little bit of time to do something. Io went from being a face to a heel, and she's the most dominant, she was the most dominant NXT champion, women's champion that we had, who beat Asuka's record. And most people don't even want to thank her for that, and she's the greatest champion to me. I think she's better than any of them. She's better than Shayna. I like Rhea, but she's never, she wasn't dominating like Io took on everybody and lost to Raquel Gonzalez. But that was an actual fight. That was an actual rivalry. That was an actual thing. What I'm saying is, why does every time Raw seem to be on the, when they press them, when they're on their fingers on the trigger, they want to hold back? They don't even want to shoot the trigger. They don't. Because this is what we get every week. We get people that shouldn't be coming back that don't know how to get their gimmicks because they don't fit. They don't. Look what happened to Jason Jordan. Duke came in there, was American Alpha. Look what happened to Chad Gable and Otis. They're heels, but they're doing good. That's the sad part of the situation. How does everybody get what they get and they don't get it? How did you fail consistently with Ruby Riot? Magically, you got rid of her because she couldn't draw, right? But the War Rangers are magically back. And surprisingly, Renee Young is okay with John being over at AEW, but she couldn't go over there herself. She could have made something. That's the point with this, this, this brand. Nobody makes a difference. Nobody tries. Nobody keeps their gimmick. And this is the, this is the, what I'm talking about. I get the same segments, the only segments with Alexa, which don't make any sense because they're a waste of time. Because nobody understands that maybe in their magical mind that this doesn't work. You got Shayna, who's never gonna become women's champion because Rhea's right there on the crosshairs. She's in the freaking, she's ahead of the people, and she hasn't even faced her. Just to give us another NXT rivalry that was the best rivalry that I probably have ever seen. And magically, the people, because I'm pretty sure they're going to bring up Dakota Kai. I'm pretty sure they're going to bring up Raquel Gonzalez next year, because that's going to happen at the draft. But magically, they didn't even want to do it. They'll put the president, they put the, they pushed the button for Bianca Belair, but SmackDown did that. Not Raw. SmackDown did it. They actually gave her a shot and she took and she won. And this is the thing. When you got a champion like her and she's facing off against Bailey and she's facing off against these guys, these other people, they don't want to give it to you. They don't. Because magically, guys, like I said before, magically, it shouldn't even be possible. Because I'm going to tell you one thing in life. Just like in the WWE, they don't know what they're doing. Because Triple H is mad at the fans. And I got something to say to that, too. 
Triple H is making NXT the biggest thing that it is right now. But you know what, guy? How come you're not helping Raw? You got people that don't even know how to run the product. And it's sad. So pretty much if you do bring back Brock Lesnar, we're going to get another year with him. That's worse than anything. So he can be, so he can take on Drew again. So he can take on Bobby and win the championship. And we get another, then we get another Heyman guy thing. That's going to be our future for 2022. That's going to be our future. The same guy who leaves every time he don't get more money. Yeah, I said it. The same guy who leaves every time he doesn't get him money. Because that dude's only in it for the money. They'll keep giving him a deal. That's why he doesn't don't want to give him a deal. They'll pay him. But let me tell you a future guy. Let me tell you something. This is why Raw is going down in the pooper. Because of the fact that they got people from NXT UK. Because there's no localization. There's no communication between Zonny's Saints and Raw. And there should be. Because you know what? All these guys on NXT are going to be on. NXT UK are going to go. They're going to go to NXT. Those dudes are going to go. And magically, like I have to accept it, magically, because it's okay to accept certain things, magically, I'm supposed to be okay with the fact that you got to get... You have a woman... Like Piper Niven, a good superstar that has a good fan base because people in the UK and NXT and America love her. So magically, they don't know what they want. Because you got Byron Saxton, who's an idiot, because he basically could have been a wrestler, but he wasn't. That's the thing about people. Nobody understands it. Because look at Corey Graves. Guy went from NXT Sports to the, the commentator because he got injured. And it's okay that he got injured. It's okay. It's okay that they do they misuse people on main browser because you know why though? They misuse them because they'll go to AEW. This is what I'm saying, guys, and I apologize for the long video. I apologize. But I'm gonna explain this to you. This is what I got from Raw last night. This is what I got from Raw. I got Piper Niven, I got Eva Marie, I got the same darn segments that I cannot stand. And this is the point I have a question about. What are you doing with Randy? What are you doing with Matt Riddle? What are you doing with the guy? What are you doing? And then Wrestling Observer wants to make a note because he's mad at the storyline. No, you should be mad at Raw. You should be mad at them, not NXT. Not Triple H because he doesn't know what he wants to say because he knows it's running into the pooper. Because he doesn't want to have the balls to say anything because it's really maddening. He doesn't want to have it. He doesn't want to have it. That's just what I'm saying. He don't want to have it. That's why he can go to NXT and make stars out of people. Because when they go to Raw, which I wouldn't go to Raw, I'll go to SmackDown. Because at least you get a championship. And the song, and then the crazy part of all of this don't make no sense. So the craziness is, you got Apollo Crews as a heel, you got everybody else as a good guy and a baby face because everybody loves him. But what do we get? We get the same old people. And Piper never, even if she does get a debut, she's going to suck at it. Because she's not going to know what to do because there's so many people she can face that she could probably have a good round with. She's going to suck at it. And I like Piper Niven, you know? They ruined her. They ruined her to nothing. They ruined her. And this is the point I don't understand. You got pigtails with her. You got pigtails. You made her look like a comedy act and it was okay to do that, but it was fine. Blood pressure. It was okay to do it. It was okay... To do that to my favorite woman, NXT women's wrestler. I can't take this, guys. I can't. I can't deal with Raw. I would love to watch it. I can't even watch my own wrestling. I can't even watch the favorite show that I grew up on watching. This is what made me want to be a wrestling YouTuber because I love wrestling like you guys do. And it's sad that we get crappy, edgy, not even, not even crappy segments that they want to go in this PG era that doesn't make any sense. But they let a guy like Stone Cold put his finger up and he literally became a star. Look what happened to him. 
Every women's room web wrestler that made the legacy is not even around to tell these people what they're doing. And they could have had something with Trish. They could have had something with Lita. They could have did something with China if she didn't die. She probably would have told these women how to be women wrestlers and make a make a statement. Don't be a diva. That's why I hate the word diva. I hate it. And they made the, and the only person that made the women's title a relevant thing was Lita because she brought it back. And it's really kind of sad, guys, because I'm like, yo, they had everything they had in the palm of their hand, and they ruined it. Every time they ruin it, because you don't know why they ruin it? Because there's no brains to it. There's nothing. We literally get the same match we got last week. We get Ricochet. We get Humberto Guerrero. We get Sheamus. We don't even get Drew Gulak, because Drew Gulak is never going to become anything. If Mansoor, who's a good guy, who has a great future, like Cedric Alexander, who has a bright future... And they won't use the guy or put him in a, in, a, in a championship setting to give him something. And Wrestling Observer was right. They're not going to give these guys championships because they don't want to do it. They want to make this Cruiserweight thing a thing, but they won't give the guy anything. They want to do it. They want to make it a thing. And it's, it, it's, it's, it's mind-numbingly bad that we get it. It's mind-numbingly bad. It's so mind-numbingly bad that I'm angry. And I usually don't get angry about this, guys. But I can't. I can't. I gotta say something. I have to. Because this is what we get every year. And and then Raw is becoming like the worst episode of WC, WCW 2000 and TNA mixed together. And you thought TNA was bad? No, this is ten times worse than TNA. Oh my god. And I mean that. Like what are the, like I'm telling you, if you guys have any comments, and I'm gonna tell you this, if you guys have any comments, I will answer them. Because I have if you guys have any questions, I will answer them. Because I'm telling you. Oh my god. What in the world have they done with Piper Nevin? What in the world have they done with Monday Night Raw? Cause this freaking thing is a freaking it's a crapshoot. It's literally, it's like diarrhea of the brain. And I can say that because I'm like, you know what? It's diarrhea of the brain. I don't know what they're thinking. I don't even know what their brain pattern is right now. Because I think, bro, people have got to be high over there. What the heck are they smoking? Like, you're kidding me. You you got Eve Marie, you got Piper Niven, and What? What, what, what? Miss All Red Everything? Red Queen is not going to do anything? Another wardrobe malfunction? Oh, great. We're going to get that again. But anyway, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Peace.